everybody again. This is Cruise Man out on the 2018 Goldwing on my way back to Dallas from Midland. About a 355 mile ride. It's a beautiful morning. As you can see, the sun's starting to come up. I'm heading east. So before too long, I'll be riding into the sun, which is not fun. I'm going to give you a little update on what's going on. I uh, posted my last uh, motor vlog from my ride from Dallas to Midland and I was a little uh, disappointed in the gas mileage because it wasn't really any better than I got on my 2012. And a couple of you commented that even on the highway uh, econ mode can make a difference. Now I was I didn't I was unaware of that. I thought that once you're up to 65, 70 miles an hour, it didn't make any difference because you're still, you're always going to be in seventh gear no matter what mode you're in. But they are suggesting that econ mode changes other things in the way the bike performs, even on the highway. So I thought, what the heck, I'll give it a test, I'll try it. So now I am riding in econ mode on the way back home. And uh, it's, of course it's too early to tell, I haven't even had my first fill up yet, but just from what the computer's telling me, it is about two miles per gallon better than it was on the way out. So we'll see. Just wanted to give you guys a shot of this sun up. It's pretty cool, isn't it? It's one of the few things we have here in Texas. We did get some pretty nice sunrises and sunsets. Uh, Cruise Man here. We just left Eastland, Texas. I just filled up with gas. And on my second fill up out of Midland, I'm now uh, getting just over 48 miles per gallon. Now that's in econ mode. Um, so maybe there's something to it. Maybe econ mode does make a difference, even if you're on the highway. Of course, I'll have to do a lot more uh, testing to prove it, but uh, one thing's for sure, I never got 48 miles per gallon on any leg on my 2012, unless I was riding in the mountains. I think in the mountains, I did get uh, 47, 48 miles per gallon a couple of times. So. Anyway, I'm pretty pleased with the mileage I'm getting today. And um, a lot of you have asked me some questions about, I think you saw some pictures of a Trail 70, uh, an old 1972 Trail 70 in one of my videos. And asked me, uh, you know, was that my bike or did I get that picture or what? But, you know, a few years ago, I guess about eight or nine years ago, I decided I wanted to restore a Trail 70 because that's what I had when I was a kid. When I was about 15, I got my first mini bike, a Honda Trail 70, and I, I think it was a 1969 model. It's either a 69 or a 70, I can't remember. But, um, you know, I've always had pretty fond memories of that, so when I got back into riding, and I, of course I'm watching all these motorcycle shows on velocity and discovery and I thought well hell I can do that I can restore a motorcycle so I found an old trail 70 on eBay for about a thousand bucks you know those things aren't cheap they were like three hundred fifty dollars new back in 69 but I found a 1972 trail 70 for about a thousand dollars on eBay and uh, I went out one evening, a friend and I went out and took a look at it. Now, I mean, it would run, it would start and run, but man, was it in bad shape. It was gonna need a lot of work from the ground up. So I launched into about a six month project of restoring this uh, Honda Trail 70. And uh, basically took every single nut and bolt off the bike and cataloged everything. I sent the engine off to a guy that does nothing but restore 
uh, Mini Trail 70 and Mini Trail 50 engines. A guy by the name of Enzo, Enzo Motorsports. And he knows those engines inside now. And I think he's retired now and just kind of does it in his spare time. But I sent the engine off and he redid the valves, recut the valves, and so that it would run on unleaded gas. And, and uh, he repainted the engine cylinders and you know cleaned everything up. Really did a nice job restoring it. All new carburetor, the whole deal. And uh, while he was doing that, I was tearing the rest of the bike down. And, you know, there's parts of the bike I painted myself, like the kickstand and some of the black parts I just painted myself. I I restored the seat pan. It was pretty rusty, and I was able to sand it down and get the dings out of it and paint it in my shop. You know, I have a uh, one of these big green trash cans that the city gives me and that's my paint booth you know when it's not too windy outside I'll take parts out there and I put a board across the top of it and I uh, can hang them on little pieces of hangers if I need to or sometimes I just hang them in my garage and spray paint them but I repainted all the parts I could paint I sent the main part of the bike the, the painted parts from Honda I sent that to a, took it over to a painter in Arlington, Texas, and uh, he did a hell of a job. Really nice job. Beautiful ruby red. It was the original paint that they had back in 1972. You could either get gold, red, or blue. And uh, I believe my bike, when I had it in 69, was actually gold, but I always liked that red. So I had him paint it red like a metallic red. Really pretty bike pretty paint job there were all kinds of challenges uh, all the chrome parts had to either be replaced or re-chromed and some of these parts it's impossible to find now uh, some uh, there are quite a few parts out there for the trail 70s because Honda made my god they made hundreds of thousands of these things they were really popular they, they made them for several years so a lot of parts you can still find, but some things you couldn't find. Now I think I bought all new fenders, uh, NOS fenders, chrome fenders. I bought an NOS muffler and an NOS uh, muffler guard that was chrome. But all my other chrome parts I had to send over to a chrome shop and that was a nightmare. I had to actually had to have everything chrome twice because they screwed it up the first time. I sent all my nuts and bolts out. I used all the original nuts and bolts and had them cadmium plated and they screwed that up big time. In fact, they screwed it up so bad I ended up having to replace almost every nut and bolt and washer on the bike. But everything came back together. I bought, a, I think I even bought a brand new seat cover. I did, right? I did. I put a whole new seat cover on. Did that myself. I bought a brand new speedometer, NOS. So heck, half the bike is almost brand new. And I, uh, you know, got it all back together and fired it up, and it runs great. It doesn't go very fast. It only goes about 40 miles an hour. And I've never really, I just ride it up and down the street in the neighborhood just to keep it running. I don't, I bet I haven't put 50 miles on it since I restored it. You know, what's a guy like me going to do riding a little bike like that? I don't have any place out in the country to ride it, or I would. But uh, it's a lot of fun, and I, you know, it's kind of a showpiece for me. Sometimes I even put it in my office and set it over in the corner of my office and just sit there and look at it. It's like a work of art. I entered it into a motorcycle show. Uh, they had a vintage motorcycle show, I don't know, six or seven years ago, and I, I entered it and I took first place.
come by and vote on it. And uh, so I got the little trophy, got first place on that. That was kind of cool. So anyway, that was a fun project. And uh, I'll show you a little video clip. I think I have a video if I can find it of me uh, starting up the bike and running it. I've had several people ask me if I'll sell it to them. I bet I've had five different offers. And the problem is I can never get my money out of it. You know, I put a re stupid money into restoring this thing. So it's not worth what I paid to have, you know, to restore it. So, you know, the paint job alone was like eight or nine hundred dollars. I think the engine restoration was seven or eight hundred. The chrome was another six or seven hundred. And then not to mention all the other parts I bought along the way, NOS parts. It just, I spent a fortune on this thing. Not, and of course, I'm not even considering my time. So I spent six months on it. And, uh, but I still got the bike. Keep it in my garage, obviously. Or in my office, if I keep it in the office. And about, you know, a couple times a year, I'll throw some gas in it, fire it up, and ride it up and down the street a few times, air up the tires, and then uh, drain all the gas out, put it back in the garage, and store it for the winter. But it's a lot of fun to have. It's If you've never restored an old bike like that, it's, it's really a lot of fun. It was... I miss it. I, I'd kind of like to do another one. I, I was going to restore like a 1970 era two-stroke Suzuki 125 or 250, but man, they, those things are just so expensive to buy on eBay. And uh, a lot of those things were raced and trashed. And, so I had a Suzuki 125 and I really loved it. I really love two-strokes. But uh, so anyway, I haven't done that yet. I did restore a 1975 uh, Honda CL360, and I'll talk about that in one of my future blogs. I'll show you some pictures and talk about that too. But anyway, I just thought it might be interesting to let you guys know a little bit about the Trail 70 history. I'm on my way back to Dallas, on my way home. Got a lot of stuff coming up this week. It's going to be a busy week. I'm going to do my Cardo Cena video this week, I hope. I'm planning to. I'm just about done with the testing on the Cardo unit. And I'm going to be doing a video on some ideas on how you can keep your garage cool in the summer. For those of you that work out in the garage on your bike or on your car, I'm going to try out some new things, some new products, and some new techniques, and I'll share that with you. I've also got the Rivco aero pegs coming in, the highway pegs. I wish I'd had them on this trip. It would have been nice to stretch out a little. But I'm going to be doing an installation video for Rivco. So that ought to be a lot of fun. And then I've got kind of an interesting video coming up next week uh, where I'm going to talk to you about how to keep your bike clean and uh, just dealing with the finish on the bike. I don't want to let too much out of the bag yet, but I've come across some interesting ideas that I think you're going to like. So I want you to stay tuned to this channel. Please subscribe. If you like this video, subscribe. Don't forget, if you've got a 2001 to 2017 Honda Goldwing, I've got some excellent maintenance video DVDs and on-demand videos for the 2001 through 2017 GL1800 and F6B. Check them out on cruisemansgarage.com. Also, check me out on Instagram and Facebook. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks again for sitting in on this, and we'll see you next time on Cruise Man's Vlog.